Now we're going on here. Hello and welcome back to Lukey Skig for now, I guess we're calling it uh, soon to uh, be under a new name. But anyways, we got a lot of big baseball news that happened this weekend. I'm Jack. Joined with me is Luke today. And we're just going to go break it down from the top to the bottom. So the first big move that we had this weekend was the Rangers have traded shortstop Elvis Andres to the A's for designated hitter Chris Davis. Chris Davis, of course, one of the best power hitters in the league. He's hit almost 40 home runs every season had a little bit of a down year last year because of the shortened season but hey big move luke what do you what is your take on this how do you think this will stack up uh for the end or for, for the al west so this is what i i heard from my my resident expert uh ben case and he went on a gigantic rant on twitter and i think i think it's on instagram too but basically that the rangers you know they had the the world series winning team that they had and then they this was like the last piece that they had from that team and they've just decided to just ship him off like he was a great player for them and they just you know shipped him off and now they're just kind of in a big rebuild and the rangers i feel have just been kind of like just floating in mediocrity kind of and yeah. they they seem to always make a signing where they sign a big player but he's like kind of washed like didn't they, like, who am i thinking who did they sign that was like kind of old uh cory cory kluber last year he won the Cy Young like two years ago and then had tommy john and like that was his rebound year last year and he did very like eh like, yeah didn't really do great didn't do bad like the rangers keep trying to like grab guys that are like on the back end of their prime and then they try to like squeeze out like the rest of what they've got like it's already 11 that's been squeezed and they're like you know we could probably still make lemonade out of this and i'm like we got like one little drop left like <laughs> i'm like i don't know rangers i mean dude i feel yeah, like it, ever it, since ever since the rangers like really like traded a rod back in the day they've just been kind of just like floating and like this mediocrity where they're just like yeah good players we don't need them we'll just get them back whenever they're kind of old <laughs> I feel like they're kind of like the Tennessee Titans of, like, the MLB. Like, they're just forever stuck in mediocrity. Like, no matter what they do, no matter who they sign, they're just kind of just, like, always going to be there. What do they they're need, do you think? Now they're now, now they're now they're in a rebuild. Now they're in a rebuild, right? So they don't really, like, I'm, I'm not sure what, what their lineup is. But now they're in a rebuild. So it's pitching. I mean, do they have hitters now that they just traded away one of the – a great hitter? I mean, they got a lot of lot of solid hitters. You know, they got Chris Davis. They signed David Dahl, which shout out Rockies for just being a terrible organization as always. <laughs> just, and saying he's going to cost people. too much money and then not sign him for $4 million. Dude, so they hold got David on. Dahl, Chris Davis. Um, <laughs> they said the, – the, No way. The they said field. that he was going to cost no, too much just, money? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they said that he, he was going to cost too much money, and so they didn't resign him. But then – signed for, for $3.8 million. But they'll trade – Texas. They'll trade Arenado. And they'll uh, pay for him to play uh, for someone else. Yeah, yeah, that is just how shit of an organization the Rockies are. Excuse my language, but they just suck. They're terrible. Dude, listen, I like to think that, you know, we're the we're the prime Colorado sports YouTube channel here. Like, you come here if you want some prime Colorado sports coverage. But we're not going to look at you and lie. And I'm not going to say that you desperately believe that you go to Rockies games to watch the Rockies. I've said this before. No. You can you can look at my, my other video, the one that we that Arnauto got traded. Look, right up there. Boom. You can go watch that. It, the reason you go to Rockies games, Colorado fans, drop a comment if I'm wrong. Coors Field. It's just, it's yeah. just, it's a great time great. to be there. It's great, you know. You get a beer, you can go up there. They, uh, dude, last time I went to Coors Field, I was 19. COVID ruined it. I want to go up there, you know, on like the on the third floor deck. Jack, you're turning 21 soon too. Up there on the third floor deck, they got the, uh, they got, they got like the bar there. I forget what it's called, but you, you guys, know, uh, you, you know, I think they about. literally just call it the rooftop. Like Do it. Oh, it is called, it is though, called the yeah. rooftop. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Rockies. Yeah. I mean, you're just, you're just selling. Not, like, dude, if the Rockies were the Rangers. Everyone in Colorado would be happy. I mean, just kind of floating around in mediocrity always has a chance, but yeah. Hey, the difference between the Rangers and the Rockies is the Rangers like to contend more than the Rockies do. Yeah, the the Rangers will sign someone and try to get there, and we're just kind of like the Rangers. The Rangers when they have it, will sell for the World Series, win the World Series, and then go, oh shit, we have no money, and then <laughs> just, which I'd rather the Rockies do. Baseball doesn't have a salary cap, does it? No, no, that's why the Dodgers have signed Dodgers. plenty of people. <laughs> Speaking of the Dodgers, signing my favorite player, Trevor Bauer, which I'm very sad about. I told Luke and Brandon and Seth that if he signed with anyone outside of the Yankees, the Red Sox, or the Dodgers, I would purchase a Trevor Bauer jersey. So shout out Trevor Bauer for absolutely shattering my heart into a million pieces. Signing with the Dodgers, still going to love him, but man, 
Dodgers look like they have the best rotation. Luke, I mean, the Padres are on the come up, but do you think now with the signing that the Padres even have a chance to contend for the NL West? So we talked about this off camera before. And like I said, I'm just getting into baseball now because, you know, it's it's a great sport. But when that World Series happened this year, when I talked about it, when uh, it was the Dodgers and the Rays, correct? That's who played. Uh, yes. So the Dodgers and the Rays. And we talked about this as a big turning point in the MLB where maybe they can come into like bigger contention because we talk about the NBA and how it's so player driven and you need to have stars and same thing kind of with the NFL where they're going. But the NHL and the MLB have always been behind the uh, behind the wall because people love big free agent acquisitions because they make sense. It makes the league interesting. So when the Dodgers won the World Series, it was kind of like, OK, here's the team with all the stars and all the money the way that the league is kind of trending in all the major leagues, like uh, like I said, basketball and football. And then you had the Rays, where they were like homegrown talent, 20 great mm-hmm. prospects, all the way that baseball's supposed to be, you know, back in the good old days, old Clint Eastwood would go out there. You know, what the hell was the name of that movie that Clint Eastwood was in? But when he went and, when he went and, curveball, no, yes, curveball? Sure, no, that's curve. not it. I don't know. I can't. Dude, someone's <laughs> gonna kill me. It's such, it's such a great movie. So what yeah, I'm getting at trash. is what, what I'm getting at is, is, you know, back in the old days, old Clint Eastwood would go down to the high school and he's always oh, trouble with the curve. And like, oh, this kid got trouble with the curve and, you know, got the prospects. But now I think that baseball is just trending in this direction where the Dodgers are at, where it's just gonna be like big city, big team, big money, and that's what it's gonna be if you I have mean, the big pockets. I feel like it's what it's been. You know, the Yankees were good for something. That has been what it's been. I mean, you know, you look at who's been in the World Series the last like 10 years and the Dodgers and the Red Sox and the Yankees are always there whether they win it or not though is is the question because it's still at the end of the day is baseball and no one has a clue what's going to happen like baseball betting is the worst idea you could have ever because you know say the Dodgers are going to be favored to win the World Series at minus 180 and then they'll go out and lose to the Pirates who have no one on their team so it's like it's Nobody true. knows what's going to happen. I mean, look at the Marlins. No one thought the Marlins were going to be good, and then they made the playoffs this year. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, knows? but the thing is, and correct, correct me if I'm wrong at any point, but even with the teams that spent a lot of money, they still had homegrown talent. Now, did this, now does, does this do, did they draft Clayton Kershaw? Is that something that like they had from the beginning, or did they I, trade? For I believe him? I believe they drafted Kershaw. They drafted Walker Bueller. Um, I know they drafted Cody Bellinger. So Bellinger, like still yeah, doing they traded it, him. Still doing it from the inside. Because what I was like, thinking, like you know, even with the Yankee teams in the past, you know, they they drafted Jeter. They had Jeter, and even with they, I had uh, David Ortiz in Boston. They drafted him. They had him. So I guess the Dodgers are kind of just following the formula. But yeah. I personally would like to see baseball kind of just end up like the other kind of leagues. And I was kind of glad the Rays didn't win because then I feel like baseball would have went through a whole transformation. And uh, it might have been better for the league. You can correct me if I'm wrong. If they were just like, hey, you know, we can go through the process. We could be a small town team, even though Tampa, beautiful city. Literally, if the Rays would have won, I believe every single Florida team would have won a championship besides the Lakers. So, yeah, it would it would have been insane. It would have been three yeah, out of four of the major leagues would have had a champion in Tampa. The Lightning, yeah. the Bucks, and the Rays. They would all been in Tampa. But thankfully, you know, the Lakers stopped that. And um, the Dodgers. So we got L.A. and Tampa, yeah. literally. Both big cities. That's, that's, that's they, all we got going. They hold the banners. Yeah. And that's just, yeah. I feel like that's kind of how sports, like as much as it sucks. I know we're here in Colorado. As much as it sucks, it's kind of when sports is at its best when these big cities are winning championships. And that's that's all I got. What do you got next? I mean, all right. Well, next up on the list, we got um, who the Rockies could have signed for basically what they paid to ship Nolan Aaron out of the way. Marcelo Zuna, one of the most consistent hitters and fielders um, in the MLB all season long, going back to the Atlanta Braves on a four-year, $64 million with a club option for 2025. So, yes, you heard me right, $64 million, only $14 million less than what uh, the Rockies sent to the Cardinals for Arenado. I don't think that Which is just depressing here, that they signed a superstar for Here's where I'm at. And I don't watch a lot of Rockies games unless unless we're together and we start betting on it, which, by the way, when baseball starts hitting up, got to make sure, tune in my boy Jack, he's going to have all the lines, all the bets, it's going to be fantastic. But, <laughs> hey, you know, people people understand, Jack. You understand. Yeah. Like, if, if it's going to, if something something's going to go wrong, it'll go wrong. But the, the, the thing is, I don't think the Rockies have ever had a, tr- a trouble with hitting. Because I remember sitting there on the couch with you and we're watching the game, and you're like, listen, the Rockies are down two. It's fine. 
they can come back, but can they stop the other team from scoring? <laughs> and no. that has always been no. the thing. So I don't know if this is an atrocious uh, move not to sign because they have hitters. They can get points on the board. But the problem oh, they is have plenty of hitters. My, my they point can't was, get was guys so off the, the field. No. no. <laughs> it's, a saying, it's, it's a dumb move. It's a dumb move. I was saying the problem more so is not so much that the Rockies didn't sign him. It's that the Braves only paid $64 million for the next one four years for a superstar player in the Rockies cheap couldn't do that like come on guys <laughs> come on you're not fooling anyone anymore Jeff Frittich <laughs> like, yeah it just sucks but I mean man Braves Braves I think are, are looking to go uh back to back uh NL East champs and I mean they are just a damn good team over there we have a problem in Colorado the- we have a problem in Colorado okay with we just really letting bad GMs linger around we did it with Elway. We loved Elway as a player, but finally he was like, hey, maybe I'm just not this so good at this, so I'm just going to step down. I was like, hey, John, yeah, we loved you. Get out of here. Leave. Three years too late, John. <laughs> yeah, like, he just he did. the only reason that he stuck around for as long as he was because he was John Elway and he got Peyton Manning to go there. Peyton Manning doesn't sign. John Elway's gone in 2016. Like, it's just it's not going to happen. Yeah. And <laughs> we have it in, in, with the Rockies, we the Nuggets. I mean, the <laughs> The Nuggets haven't made a big, like, sure, they drafted good homegrown talent. I'm not saying the GM, the Nuggets is terrible. But the thing is, Colorado teams like to make a solid core and then just never expand after that. Not, okay? not help them. Yeah. You think about the Super Bowl team with the Broncos. They did it. They made it, and then it fell apart. Rockies. I mean, hey, shout out, shout out, Joe Sackick. He's he's keeping it together for the Avalanche. Here's though. what here's what I'm about to say. He is continually to push it right, but they haven't made it there yet. And I feel like once they make it there, they might just fall apart. He did sign Brandon Sad Saad. He did sign uh, Devon Toes, but in Co- in Colorado, we just kind of have a GM problem where we just like to let people linger, and I think it's a problem. So I'm just yep, just we need to problem, we need like to have that. gumption. We need to be you know all cojones and not just shaft all the time, and just go and make the decision to not be mediocre. Mediocre is not okay. Like when Colorado sports teams are good, like people want Colorado sports teams to be good. Like people expect the Rockets to be good. People expect the Rockets to be good. The Nuggets and the Avalanche they expect it. It doesn't happen. It's frustrating. But the problem with that is that the teams can suck and fans will still show up because it's true. Denver fans just love love watching games. It's true. So last topic of the day in the baseball world is a very sad topic of the day. We got 40 minor league baseball teams that have been cut. They've been X'd. Major League Baseball said, no more. We don't want to pay you guys. I think it's terribly sad uh, you know, to see all these teams go. It's a lot of uh, prospects that are are not going to have a home to play for. I mean, independently baseball, I think is going to grow because of it. But I think as a whole for the, for the league and for these teams, I think it's a negative move. Luke, what are, what are your thoughts on this one? So I have a hot take because I'm not a baseball purist. So I'm always (laughs) thinking here about the longevity of the league and the popularity of the league, because I think that's what makes leagues good. So when you think about the other leagues, right, the other three major leagues in uh, sports, NHL, NBA, uh, NFL. The reason why they have such a big draw is because when you have young prospects and talents going out there, even if they suck, there's a point where people, they like it. Like they want to see LaMelo Ball out there in the NBA. You want to see the new fresh guy go out there and play. Connor McDavid, like he was out there. And I know baseball is a, it's, it's a difficult sport, but the thing is like, why is college football and college, um, College football and college basketball is so big because it's homegrown. It's America. And this is the reason why NHL hockey or uh, college hockey isn't big because a lot of the prospects, just like base, baseball, don't go to college. Like they don't play college baseball. They don't play college hockey. And that's why a lot of Americans don't get into it because they'll go and they'll play somewhere else. They'll play overseas. They'll play in some minor league team that's not televised. And I think this is really good for the league because it maybe it'll force them to kind of, you know, put the guy out there. Hey, this guy's really good. He came through high school. He came through college just throw him out there is he gonna strike out hell yes he's gonna strike out but he's gonna sell tickets he's gonna sell yeah. tickets because as a young man personally i want to see the guy out there why was bryce harper and mike trout so you know highly touted because people are like oh my god dude there's this young guy that's going into the major leagues because a lot of guys don't get into the major leagues until they're 27 and then there's a disconnect there and that's why i feel like baseball has always been more for the older people 
the people that have already, you know, kind of adults that have made it, not not for our age group, where it's like, I'm not drawn to baseball because all of the guys that are playing are already like 28, 29, 30, 31. And I'm like, okay, well then, it doesn't give kids a chance to feel like they can make it. You have to go through I mean, the system, and it's a very hard system. I, I, and that's why going to the major leagues, last thing, that's why going to the major leagues has always been such a grand accomplishment because it's so damn hard to get there. I think it's good. You can tell me why it's bad. I mean, I think it's bad because, you know, you have – so many players in the leagues that have have grinded out and i mean great players in leagues you know uh maybe one of the greatest stories of all time is mike piazza who was drafted like 30 like something like almost like in the thousands of, of draft picks and and was drafted and is now in the hall of fame guys like that have less of a chance to make it now because when you're drafted that far back you have to start at the lowest to low of the minor leagues and you have to work your way through so many of these teams where a lot of these guys that aren't given a chance, um, you know, as a prospect, aren't really looked at super highly, don't get that chance to develop now. You know, baseball is all about development. And a lot of these guys um, are just raw athletes at the age of 18 and, you know, don't have maybe as much as the technical skills uh, that scouts are looking for. And it takes time and it takes, you know, professional coaching to get there. And a lot of these guys that are drafted so late that want to have a chance are willing to, you know, take a couple years of, of making, you know, dirt nothing, basically, to try and get the chance to go there. And now this is kind of just taking that opportunity away of, you know, all these great stories of a dude that's like, you know, 30, has been in the minor leagues all of his life, and now comes out and, and pitches in the World Series and does great. So I think it's kind of taken away from that aspect. And I also think it's taken away from a lot of these towns, you know, um, that, that get these minor league teams. You know, we the closest one we have is up in Colorado Springs, but... Pueblo has been trying to push for, you know, a minor league team for, for ages now. And we had the chance that they, they blew it, you know, not to get political, but the city council blew it. Um, so that team's now up in, in Windsor, Colorado. But there's so many um, small towns and small cities in, in America that have a minor league team and that really rally around these teams and love going to the games. And now that's just kind of completely taken away from them. I agree with you 100%, but I think it's on the NCAA to fix it because you can I, easily be on the NCAA. Because you think about it, people in towns r rally around college teams. Like if CSU Pueblo's baseball team was a place where MLB prospects came to play, can you imagine how much revenue that could drive to a city? I think it's on baseball as a whole. Baseball has always been a place that's always focused on the game, right? And I think that's where they've fallen behind the curve. There's nothing wrong with it from a game perspective. They're like, okay, we're going to focus on the game. This is the game. This is the way that's supposed to be. But they've never really made changes to it where, you know, maybe it hurts the game, but it helps the flair aspect of it. And baseball's been the only sport where they're like, we're going to make sure that the game stays pure. Basketball's made changes football's made so many changes the defense can't even touch the guy anymore and yeah. baseball is at a point where they need to be able they're, they're at a stalemate dude where it's like okay you are losing money you are getting gouged you are bleeding out your mate your minor leagues are dead they're coming for you next they're coming for you mlb and you need to make sure that you're going to make changes it does it, it might make make the game look different but that's okay. You need to be able to put put the dude out there that's, that's 19. If he strikes out, he sucks. It's fine. Bench him, but put him out there. They didn't put Lamella Ball out there until, like, they haven't even started him until 30 games in. People want to see the young prospects. If they suck, it's fine. It's a league, and that's why development through the league is so good. And a lot of these guys in the NFL don't get good until they're 24, but we understand it. We don't like not seeing them. It's like, okay, we drafted a dude in the third round. Like, the MLB draft doesn't have any flair because the guys that get drafted, you're never going to see. <laughs> you're not so, going to so see them. Here's here's my rebuttal to that argument. Luke. I don't think it's so much the game that needs to change. I think it's the marketing that needs to change. There's actually a lot of good young talents out there. Luke, name the outfielder for the Atlanta Braves that I think he's, he's now 20 and has broken so many records as a rookie. I'm going to be name honest, Jack. Jack, I'm not going to be able to name him. I can't. Yeah, Ronald that's the point. This is the point because uh, their Acuna. marketing they is terrible. They don't market him. They have I can't, terrible marketing. I can't tell you. You can't, you. you can't post a video of the MLB on anywhere on social media without it getting taken down because they care so much about their copyright for no reason. You don't see Ronald Acuna, you know, hitting a 400-foot blast, you know, up into the third deck of, of the National Park. I don't know what they call it anymore. Because they only post it on the MLB account, and then nobody follows the MLB account. You know, if it was, you know, Joe Schmo posts it, and there's like 80 Joe Schmoes that post it going, oh my god, look what he did, it's going to get out there more. But they don't have that kind of marketing. 
Their marketing is awful. As a awful. <laughs> as an awful. organization, the MLB is falling apart. It's Rob Manfred. He's awful. He's just not good. He's terrible. You gotta get the boomer out of there. You just gotta get him out. He's not he's not making good decisions. Baseball's at a stalemate, and we're gonna have to figure out what the heck they're gonna do. I think, like I said, I think the minor league thing is good. It sucks for a lot of small towns, and it is, but I wanna see what they do. This is your chance to kind of shake it up, put the kid out there that sucks. It's fine. He's going to sell tickets because they're going to go, oh, my God, this guy out of high school bombed a whole bunch of home runs. Can he do it against Clayton Kershaw? No, Kershaw's going to curve him up. It's going to be awful. But I right. bet but you you're going to drive up. It's going to be fun. You're, you're going to drive up ticket sales because people are going to go, oh, snap. Because the one time, baseball's a game of skill, but everyone has a hitter's chance. And if Kershaw gets a ball away from him and Joe Schmo from St. Louis, Missouri, hits a home run off of him at 18 years old, Baseball has become really interesting, and you're like, oh. And then even as perspective, you're you're a you know you're a Cy Young winner, and you just had some kid from high school hit a bomber on you. You're like, oh snap, what, what just happened? Uh, baseball. That, that just that kid just pieced me up. That yeah. kid just pieced me up. <laughs> it gets really interesting. I don't think it's going to happen. I think they're still going to find a way to go through the farm system, and we won't be able to see anyone. But I'm a fan of young talent, even if they are terrible. We'll I just think fun. it's fun. We'll make it fun this year. I'll I'll start a revolution right here on the YouTube channel. I'll be talking about the young prospects. I'll do that for you in MLB so you don't have to. <laughs> I know, and I'll never see them. It'll be terrible. You have to imagine. <laughs> last dude, last question. For, for, I'm going to throw one for you, Jack. Where do you think they're going to put them before we get out of here? Where, where are they going to put these young prospects instead? Are they just going to shorten the draft? I mean, there's, there's still to put a, ton, a ton of teams out there because, I mean, there's, what, 30 teams in the MLB, 32 teams in the MLB. And they all have, so like, 12 teams. minor league teams. Yeah, they all have, like, six minor league teams. So, I mean, really, it's like you're losing one team yeah. per per team one to two teams so i mean i think yeah. it, i think in the grand scheme of things it doesn't have a big impact but i think down the line it potentially could if you know they start really cutting more of these teams but i think for right now it's not too bad that makes sense all right make sure you like make sure you subscribe here at guess what not lukey sig anymore i've changed it Buckethead sports Buckethead sports leave a like leave a sub jack anything from you i got nothing else but uh tune in next week for for more bucket Sports bucket. Sports sports bucket. <laughs> sports bucket. Make sure you like. Make sure you subscribe. Subscribe over here. Another video if you want to check it out. Let's get out of here. Peace.